The FIA European Track Racing Championship makes its annual visit to Le Mans. 200 kilometers southwest of Paris, Le Mans is more than just a racetrack. It's where you experience the history of motorsport anew, time and time again. Le Mans is a term that stands on its own because everyone knows Le Mans, not just those who want to be racing drivers. It has a long history and it's great to be here. It's a legendary circuit and uh, I do love to come here since the beginning, since 2011, when I started truck racing and started to come here in Le Mans. It was one of my favorites uh, because of the history. Once again, Le Mans becomes a place of pilgrimage this weekend for truck racing fans from all over Europe. Le Mans is a mythical circuit, so I think the crowd and the, the people here in Le Mans is quite good, you know, and uh, yeah, of course, they are closest to the, to the track, so they enjoy the races, and I think that the races are quite exciting. One man wants to make history on this hallowed ground, Adam Latchko. With a total of 53 points, the Czech driver is leading in the overall classification. He could be crowned European champion for the first time right here. But who are his opponents? Reigning champion Jochen Hahn, second in the championship, and third, the Hungarian Norbert Kisch. Do they stand any chance of stopping him? It's unlikely. You have to be realistic. It would be impossible unless Adam makes a terrible mistake or his truck has a mechanical failure. They have the best package this year. Uh, the driver, the track, uh, the, the track with the engine and with everything, you know, together. So, is it just a matter of time before Adam Lachko wins the title? The pre-race favourite keeps his composure. Pressure? Not in his vocabulary. No pressure. <laughs> I'm a very cool down man. And everybody say hello champion and I say hey, cool down. No stress and we wait after the Harama. Is he really that relaxed? The truth is, the first qualifying session does not go as planned. He ends in seventh position. His strategy, uh, strategy. is go clear. <laughs> no, no, no. Go safely and look to the front. No, no, go to the, some accident and so some fight. And I try the best. Chivalry is alive and well for the first race of the weekend. It's ladies first with Steffi Halm on pole position. This is my second pole position of the year. It was important for me that qualifying went as well as before and it hasn't done recently. Judging from that, I have good prospects for this race. Sharing the front row with her is Norbert Kish. He had expected somebody else to take pole position though. I thought second place is very good because maybe Johan or Adam will be in pole position but no, Steffi. So, yeah, okay, it's a good lap for her, I guess. Jochen Hahn lines up fourth. All the favourites have taken up the foremost positions, apart from Adam Latchko. The late summer weather is perfect. And they're off. 11 laps on the Bugatti circuit. Hahn gets away cleanly, but what is Kish doing? He has a disastrous start, dropping several places. But the worst part for Kish is watching his rival, Jochen Hahn, overtake him. Yeah, big mistake at the start, unfortunately. We were going slower than, uh, than I expected. So I wasn't getting enough boost or boost at all. <laughs> so I had to change a gear, but then the, the green lights came, you know, just as I was changing gears, so... Mm. But over the course of the first lap, Kish fights his way back up to third position. Steffi Halm maintains her lead, appearing to be in a safe position. But she has a close shave, just about dodging a penalty. Why? Unfortunately, I cut two corners. I've got no idea where I cut them, but a third would have resulted in a drive-through penalty. After that, I just drove incredibly slowly to be on the safe side. Sometimes you realise what you've done, but not this time. But the third marker isn't knocked over, so she remains in the lead. Ahead of Hahn and Kish, she's in control. Behind them, though, things are livening up. It's Korbert versus Lentz, a tough battle, but Sasha Lentz comes out on top. Fifth position is his reward. Now, what is Adam Latchko doing in the number 55 truck? In order to be crowned European champion, he has to rack up eight points more than his most formidable rival, Jochen Hahn. He loses ground in this race, finishing down in seventh place. 
at the head of the field. The drivers fight for a spot on the podium. Norbert Kish makes one last push for second place against Jochen Hahn in the last corner and fails. Having seen this in her rear view mirror, Steffi Halm is on the road to victory. In 2016, she won twice in France, and now her run of successes at Le Mans continues. We're absolutely thrilled that it was enough to win. Halm Han Kish, and it's a lady who tops the podium in the first group photo of Le Mans 2017. Let's have a look at the results. Jochen Harm, the reigning European champion, is in second place ahead of Norbert Kish. There's no way Adam Lachko is satisfied with seventh. And with one victory under her belt, Steffi Halm has gained vital points in the overall table. My aim was third place, which would have meant fewer points. This is ideal, of course. Racing goes on and we're planning to attack again. And the fans are looking forward to it. Their thirst for action has not yet been quenched. Luckily, there's plenty of it in race two. It's a reverse grid race. Gert Kurber takes up pole position alongside Adam Lachko on the front row. After his disappointing seventh place finish, he's eager for better in race two. We make again a big change because on the first race is not really good. P7, it's really not good. And now we will see what we do, when we go good way or not. Everybody is ready for race two. And they're away. It soon becomes clear that Lachko has made yet another bad start. He loses several places. Even his teammate David Rosetsky overtakes him. Things are very tight. Steffi Halm versus Norbert Kish. Lachko tries to recover. He moves up close to Sasha Lentz. He's aggressive, but the Czech driver slides wide. It looks like he'll miss out on the podium yet again. From David Rosetsky's perspective, we see Lentz battling Lachko. At the front, the trio of Gert Korber, Spaniard Antonio Albafetti, and Norbert Kish. Kish and Albafetti apply pressure, but Kerber shuts them out, leaving the competition trailing until the final lap. Watch out! Albafetti attacks the German driver, whose victory was almost certain until this. I actually went into the final corner relatively smoothly. I turn the wheel and suddenly, paf! I get barged off the track by Antonio. I think he was quite bold in choosing where to start braking. The driver from Madrid has a different point of view, of course. I was uh, watching that he was braking a little bit early in some corners, and I saw that he was braking early in that corner, you know. Uh, he didn't close the door, so I have to try it. I brake late, I turn turning the, the inside, and uh, yeah, we have uh, contact. He closed a little bit when, when he showed me there, and we have contact. It was, uh, from my point of view, a race incident. Schade drum, fürs ganze Rennen und in der letzten Runde. It's a shame to have led the whole race, and then for something like that to happen in one of the last corners. It's Albafetti versus Kurba. The door was left open, and who slipped through? Norbert Kish. As the saying goes, when two people quarrel, a third rejoices. He takes home victory. The best fun you can have on wheels, put into words. An opportunistic win for the Hungarian Norbert Kish in race two of the weekend. I could see the horn is that there, there would some, there, there something will be happening. Because I, I, I thought that Antonio would try and overtake, and in the last lap he tried. And yeah, I had to say he failed, because he pushed Gerd a little bit, which, uh, which enabled me to, to go in front, you know. Okay, we came out side by side with Antonio, and had a very tough fight side by side for two or three corners. But you know, to come up in the, in the last sector, I could come up in front and in the last lap and win the race. It was, it was quite exciting. Of course, Gert Korba and Antonio Albafetti need to have a chat after the race, but nothing changes in the table.
Let's have a look at that result table post-race. Norbert Kish, the winner. Antonio Alva, 32nd. And Gert Korber, 3rd. Jochen Harm, 4th, ahead of Rosetsky. And Harm, Adam Lachko, down in 8th place. But Norbert Kish still fancies his chances in the fight for 2nd place in the overall classification. Jochen Harm, however, maintains the spot and has no intention of relinquishing it. Norbert is a cunning old fox, you see. Of course, he'd say that second place is feasible. He's the one I'm watching out for at the moment. I'm not too bothered about anyone else. I'm just trying to rack up more points than him. What's more, the reigning champion still has a good chance of defending his second place. And this has become no less likely after the first two races in Le Mans. Adam Lachko has failed to inspire much confidence today. Seventh place, then eighth. It's not good enough and it's going to be a long night for Team Bagheera. What do nights in Le Mans have to do with sleep? Very little, at least this is true for the fans. An excellent program of shows turns the event into a 24-hour extravaganza. No one goes home and the stands are always full. Enthusiasm for motorsport has many facets. The following morning, Sunday, is a special one for Adam Lachko, as it's his birthday. After qualifying, he has a small celebration for his 33rd birthday with cake and sparklers and candles. I think it's nothing changed. It's like every day same, but only today is my birthday. But uh, on the race, uh, I think it's perfect because now I'm a second on the time practice. And uh, Sasha is a little bit very fast. Uh, he surprised everybody, I think. Indeed, Sasha Lentz wins the Super Pole, setting a new qualifying lap record to boot. He's congratulated by the other drivers and can hardly believe it himself. Whenever we go to Le Mans, I think, damn it, I've never been confident on this track. We're really pleased, of course, in general, about my first pole position and also to be here at Le Mans. People always talk about Le Mans and to gain pole position here is a fantastic achievement for us. But careful on the start. Yeah. Yesterday you pushed me completely. This is the moment Adam Lachko was referring to. Now that's in the past. He's setting new goals. I hope that afterwards we'll have a good start and a little bit of luck and then we'll be able to break away. I'm hoping to finish in a good position. On the front row, there are two rather different frames of mind. The man from the Czech Republic is totally at ease, while the German is tense. Race three, the first of two today, and it's a special one mostly because of the start. The duel is between Adam Lachko in his Freightliner versus MAN driver Sasha Lentz. They're neck and neck as they approach the first few corners. Neither is able to break away. Just behind them, every position is being hotly contested. From Harm's perspective, we see Kish, Rosetsky and Harm in the fight for fourth. There's just as much jostling at the front. Lentz forces Lachko off the track again, but he recovers, even managing to overtake. This puts the weekend's favourite in the lead for the first time. I had a very good start. I had a really good start. We came into the chicane together and he refused to let me past him. I had no idea if something else was going to happen. But nothing does happen. Everything is done by the book. The challengers. David Rosetsky takes a shot at Jose Rodriguez. But in track racing, you've got to be prepared to take some blows.
at the front of the field, Lachko is ahead of Lentz, Hahn and Kish. But the Hungarian is eager for more. He wants a spot on the podium. To do that, he'd have to overtake Hahn, but he doesn't manage it, and so he remains in fourth. Meanwhile, Adam Lachko is on his birthday lap. It's everything but a Sunday drive, though, as Sasha Lentz is putting pressure on him from behind, corner by corner. I was faster the whole time and kept closing the gaps. We're very satisfied with the setup for the whole weekend. Shane Britton and Antonio Albafete are rather less pleased. In the middle of the race, the Spaniard tries to overtake on the inside, but where there is a will, there is not always a way. Things are really heating up between Jochen Hahn in the number one truck and Norbert Kish. In this race, they're fighting for third place, but in the overall classification, it's all about second. Fantastic racing from both drivers, but Hahn believes he comes out on top. In the final two laps, I faltered a little, and then he attacked me, but it was a clean fight. I let him live, and he did the same for me, and I came out of it better. I'm pleased, of course, with my podium position. I'm also in direct competition with Norbert, you see, which I'm happy about. I don't mind if 100 people win, as long as I'm ahead of Norbert. The finish line. Adam Lachko is ahead of Lentz, followed by Hahn and Kish. Lachko can celebrate for the first time this weekend, and you can sense the relief. Congratulations, Adam. This victory is anything but a birthday present. It was a hard fight. Sasha is really good on the break and turn in. And I have in the middle of the breaks a problem with uh, with the cooling, front front cooling. And after it's coming, it's okay, and uh, I control Sasha and I go to the first position. 11 laps on the Bugatti circuit are now over. Adam Lachko takes home 20 points for the win, and it's an excellent result for Sasha Lentz, who takes second place ahead of former champion Jochen Hahn. It's not just the fight for the European Championship that is exciting. The Promoters' Cup also keeps the fans on the edge of their seats. Andre Kurzim, the 25-year-old German driver, hopes to triumph in the end. He made it to the podium four times this weekend, but remains in the shadow of Jose Rodriguez in the championship standings. It's still wide open. I'm 18 points behind, so I have to hope my opponent has some mechanical problems. Then I'll be able to attack him. Nothing is decided yet. It's lunchtime here at Le Mans. Watching the track racing stars, this is hard to miss. They're close to their fans, of course, the whole motorsport family gets together and even those who have never experienced the atmosphere of a racetrack before are warmly drawn into the event. Unsociable? Nope. The drivers sign autographs until their fingers are sore. The weekend at Le Mans is more than just racing action. The industry and trade present their wares and everything is on the move. We return to the track for the final race of the weekend, the reverse grid race. Adam Lachko finds himself in eighth position on the starting grid. On the front row, Andre Kurzim's Mercedes and the Iveco truck driven by Gert Kurba. I'm really hoping that I finish cleanly today, but it's going to be more difficult. In both the second and third rows, there are some good, competent drivers and teammates of mine. It's definitely going to be a hard race for me. It would be great, of course, if I could concentrate on the start and have a clean race. And if I knew whether after 11 laps I'll be standing on the podium or not, I'd be happy.
nach elf Runden wissen wir, ob ich auf dem Podium stehe oder nicht. And here we have Andre Kurzim's perspective. Ich hoffe, wir müssen erst mal die erste Runde überleben. Danach We've got to survive the first lap, then I hope we'll be able to make the best ja, of it. Hoffen, it worked really well in Zolder, Zolder, so Zolder. I hope the same happens here. It's 24 degrees at the start line, overcast but dry. These are prime conditions for the drivers. And we're in the cockpit with Adam Latchko. In the left corner of the screen, you can see how Andre Kurzim loses four places immediately at the start. Korba has moved up into first position, while Steffi Halm in the number 44 MAN track benefits too, advancing from fourth into second. The only woman in the field leaves the men in the dust with one look back. Second position after the start was perfect. I could have gone a little faster, but there wasn't enough room. And then I saw that we weren't fighting very hard, but rather we were moving away from the field, which worked a treat. What is Kish doing? After starting fifth, he loses ground at first. Team Tankpool Fierance Fansig's dominance at Zolder comes to an end at Le Mans. And that's why Mr. Track Racing, as the fans call him, has a confident race. It's gridlock behind him what we call the champion's block. Since Vrasetsky in the number 33 truck is trying to rein in Hahn, this is all in the aid of teammate Lachko. To no avail, but one man benefits. Sasha Lentz as he slips past them. We had a relatively tough battle with David, who tried to block us so that Adam could go past, and so it becomes more difficult as he has more and more protection. I just want him to drive, not to block drivers out. Sasha Lentz is soon put back in his place by the reigning and perhaps even this year's champion, since Jochen Hahn overtakes him first, followed by Adam Latchko, although Latchko makes life very difficult for Lentz. But in any case, it's not the Germans' race. Sasha Lentz receives a 30-second penalty for speeding off the start. Despite that and his strong performances this weekend, he finishes 11th in the race. What a shame. At the front, the 54-year-old Korba and his Iveco truck become one. Steffi Halm is on his tail but doesn't manage to overtake. Gert Korba claims victory, his first major success since Le Mans 2006. Incredible. His joy is indescribable. I do look very tired indeed, but that's what age does to you. No, it was actually easy. I made no driving errors and the truck went like clockwork. And I'm really pleased to finally give my team, Team Schwaben truck, the gift of victory. Gert tops the podium. Even his competitors are thrilled. I'm really pleased for Gert. He's put a lot into this over the last year and he's had to fight hard. He should have survived a few more laps yesterday. He could have had his first victory in the new truck. It worked well today and I'm delighted. The results. Kurba is ahead of Halm and Halm. The field is tightly packed. The lap times of the first seven are very close indeed. But for the winner, it's all about enjoying the moment. And that's exactly what Kerber is doing. We now know for sure that the winner of the European Championship will be decided in Spain. Now for the standings before the final four races. Norbert Kisch is out of the running for the championship, leaving Adam Latchko and Jochen Hahn to battle it out. The team Bagheera driver has a 45-point lead. It's happened to me before. I was 50 points ahead with two races to go and I still lost. So anything is possible. Adam Latchko on the road to his first FIA European Truck Racing Championship title. He's inched closer, but he's not there yet. We can't wait for the big showdown, 7th to 8th of October 2017 at Harama in Spain on the outskirts of Madrid. It's going to be a party, or should we say, a fiesta.